With the retirement of Barbara Mikulski, one of Maryland's U.S. Senate seats will be open. That is the marquee statewide race this election year. We've invited both candidates to join us in the coming weeks. And joining us now from Baltimore City is Delegate Kathy Shalega, the Republican nominee. Thank you for being with us. Oh, this is great. Thanks for coming out to the MLK Center. Now, yes, tell us where you are. The MLK Community Center in West Baltimore, is it? Yes, we're right here in front of the MLK Center in West Baltimore, and it's a center I can't be more proud of. There are a couple of folks that have worked really hard to turn this center around. They have GED classes, after-school care, they do food distribution, computer skills. It's just such a great example of good things going on in West Baltimore. Um, and these, this isn't a government program. There are just a couple of men from the community that had a heart to turn their community around. They have a community garden, flowers they've planted. It's just really a shining example of good things in West Baltimore. And it sounds to, to my ears like it's very popular with kids on a, on a late summer day. It is so true. There's kids running around playing, which is just joyful to see kids here in the, in the park next to the center. All right, let's talk about the campaign. The, the latest poll out this week had you trailing uh, Chris Van Hollen 55 to 26, I think. What, what is your strategy for closing that gap? Well, you know, we know that he spent, Chris Van Hollen spent eight to ten million dollars in the primary. So, of course, his name ID is high and, and I spent about a half a million dollars. So, uh, we know that our message is really resonating with people and our challenge is to raise enough money to get up on TV so that we know that we can be victorious in uh, November. So control of the U.S. Senate it appears to be up for grabs in this election. What is the importance of that in your view? Yes, it, it, the U.S. Senate is so important, in, look, in every election cycle. And it's been 30 years since this Senate seat has been open with the retirement of Barbara Mikulski. And I think it's time to put a younger, taller Polish girl from Baltimore in that U.S. Senate seat. <laughs> and, um, you know, with the same hard work ethic and, and the same gritty blue collar background. As a candidate, how are you dealing with the, the Trump phenomenon? So um, you have a strong supporter in Governor Hogan, Republican governor of Maryland. He is very clear in saying that he's not voting for Donald Trump. That's something that kind of divides your, your base a little bit. Uh, who are you going to vote for for president? So I've said since the, the uh, November, when I entered this uh, race for U.S. Senate on November 10th, I said I would support our not party's nominee. Um, Donald Trump was not my first pick or second, but he's our nominee. And so, yes, I am supporting him. And, but we know in Maryland, voters are very independent on their thinking on the Senate seat. And I'm so proud to have the support and endorsement of Governor Larry Hogan. We know one thing, that turning Maryland around has been well done as we move uh, to turn this state around because Larry Hogan is a reasonable businessman. I'm a small business owner. 30 years ago, my husband and I started a small construction company. And so I bring those same skills to the table of a balanced budget and how to create jobs and uh, how, to, how to make sure that ideas that are proposed are really workable or whether, whether they just work on paper. Well, the economy certainly seems to be the, the top issue in this election cycle. Everybody, with the exception of maybe the top earners, uh, seeing uncertainty, seeing jobs uh, disappearing, some of them overseas. What, what's the answer to your view in growing the American economy, the American workforce? You know, everyone is struggling. I've really enjoyed, since November, getting into this race, traveling across our state. I, I've been uh, to Western Maryland, the Shore, Southern Maryland, Montgomery and Prince George's County, and of course I live in Baltimore County and Perry Hall. And the, the answer's the same throughout. When I meet with businesses, they say that the regulatory environment coming out of Washington has tied their hands. 
and they'd like to see a business owner down there who really knows what it means to sign the front of a paycheck. Uh, one, what is it, 1.3 or 1.4 percent growth in our economy uh, has been just really hard on these businesses, and it's been really hard on family budgets in the same way. The cost of goods has gone up, yet salaries have remained pretty flat, and we really just need to get the economy going. And we're not going to do that by passing more taxes or putting more regulations on businesses. We just need some good common sense people to go to Washington, roll their sleeves up, and get some things done. Marylanders uh, just today got some bad news on the, the cost of health care, uh, with the state approving some big increases in insurance premiums uh, under the Obamacare plans. Um, the next Congress may take a look at this law. What, what if anything, would you change in our health care policy? Well, Jeff, thanks for bringing that up. I will tell you that is a big contrast be between my opponent and myself. Uh, my opponent, Chris Van Hollen, has been a big supporter of the Affordable Care Act, and I have not been since its inception. The Affordable Care Act has turned out to be anything but affordable. And we see that with families. You know, I have a young, uh, my son and his wife are 29. They have a, a beautiful little daughter. And his insurance premium is $1,000 a month. He called me, said, Mom, how can I afford this? And then we get the news today that those premiums are going up. Again, I'm not sure if his is going up. But, um, you know, this is not affordable. Of course we knew we needed health care reform. But the direction that we've gone is not sustainable. And, and I um, want to go to Washington where we can put some common sense, pra sense practices into place. Uh, this Affordable Care Act isn't working for consumers. It's not working for patients. It's not working for our health care providers. And, you know, the insurance company's answers has just been to raise the premiums. What, would you say that there's a signature issue? Is there, is there one key focus of, of your campaign? Well, not just one. I think I'm, I'm, going, I'm running for this office because of a number of things. I'm disappointed with the economy. I'm tired of people, career politicians in Washington who have never signed the front of a paycheck. I think we need more business owners to roll up their sleeves and run for office. And the other, one of the other things I'm very passionate about is veterans issues. I'm, my dad is a 20 year career army veteran. Very proud of him. He served two tours in Korea and one tour in Vietnam. And when I look at the VA and the failures in the VA, it's, my heart just breaks for these men and women that are serving our country and they're not getting good health care and, and their psychological uh, issues are not being handled. Um, we have some, some that ha have to wait 700 days to get a doctor's appointment. That's not right. And my opponent's been in Washington for 14 years. Over that time, things have not gotten better. We need some people that will go there, roll their sleeves up, and, and put partisan things aside and, and say, this is not Democrat, it's not Republican. This is a moral obligation that we have for the men and women who voluntarily sign up for our military and serve our country. Uh, let's talk about public safety for a minute. We've had uh, certainly a very high uh, homicide rate again this year in Baltimore City, other parts of the state as well. Nationally, uh, some significant terrorist uh, attacks. The Congress will focus, as it always does, on, on guns at some point. Are there any gun control bills that, that you would support? You know, I will tell you that the high murder rate in Baltimore is so concerning to me. Um, not just the murder rate, but the number of people that are shot that are, it, it's not acceptable. I know people across our state look at that. It's not just hurt uh, our citizens and residents who live in fear in parts of our city, but it's hurt our businesses where people are deciding not to come to our beautiful city to uh, spend their money. And the answer to that, I recently met with some uh, gr a group that's, a, um, I think it was Marylanders Against Gun Violence was the name. And one thing we absolutely agreed upon, I met with these women whose sons had been murdered in Baltimore. And we all know that it, the judges and the prosecutors are not doing their jobs. These men that were murdered were murdered by people who had records of committing crimes with firearms. That is not acceptable. 
if you are a felon, you should not be in possession of a gun. And if you get caught, that judge, that prosecutor should lock you up and get them out of our communities. It's simply not acceptable when we find time after time that these felons are caught with a long rap sheet and they're in our communities terrorizing the people that live there. Delegate that Kathy Shalega, I apologize. We're going to have to leave it there. Uh, joining us from West Baltimore with some sirens in the background. We do appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us here at the MLK Center. Thank you.